Hey everyone, this is Courtney from Little Black Homes on the Prairie. Today we're talking about why and how I'm teaching my first grader about chemistry. All right, let's hop on in. All right, everyone, let's talk about chemistry. How did we get here? What are we doing here? So earlier this year, I had a list of different types of sciences on a wall in our house. I was just trying to do some planning, um, thinking about all of our elementary school years, different types of sciences that we might study. And so on this list, I had meteorology, astronomy, physics, chemistry, geology, just a list of things. Well, this list was for me, not for my kids really. And so my son was looking at the list and he said, mm, yeah, I think I want to study chemistry. And Rob was like, what are you talking about? Like we're sitting there eating breakfast. And I'm like, what are you, what are you referring to? He said on that list, I want to do chemistry. I said, oh, okay, well, that's good to know. Thank you. He didn't say that, tuck that away. And so I already purchased a geology and astronomy curriculum at this point. And I thought, chemistry, uh, I don't know, you're in first grade, what does that mean? How do we do it? I looked for some curriculum that would be appropriate or that I could kind of bring down to first grade level couldn't find anything so I thought okay we're just going to move forward with this because this is something that he's expressed doing and if he's expressed it it's because somewhere in him he, he needs to learn this so I talked to my husband about it and he was like really chemistry I said yeah I mean I know it's kind of a tough subject and I don't know how to teach it to a first grader but experience at a young age I think is so important because I don't know what he's gonna be when he grows up he doesn't know what he's gonna be when he grows up and if I limit what he's exposed to then I'm limiting his growth potential in my opinion um, so quick story when I started off in college my major was biomedical engineering and I wanted to create and work on the science for um, amputees and people who need prosthetics so anyway we get there freshman year and we're in an intro to engineering class and so these are just all types of engineering it's not just going to be towards your major one of the projects was to build a suspension bridge with a group using connects which are like rods and kind of peg pieces more like joints that connect together anyway get this project and I was like I've never used these before now these are children's toys like connects are for children and the other young men in the or the young men who i was in a group with just like doo, 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 snap 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 build 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 put it together here's the bridge and i'm like okay so then we had another project where we had to use legos once again i had never played with legos my brother is eight years younger than me so by the time we got legos like i was in high school and he was playing with legos i'm like i'm i don't play with legos but we had another project we had in, in the engineering class where we were building something with Legos. And the other gentlemen, do, 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 click, 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 snap, 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 build, 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 done. And I just sat there. I was like, yeah, have at it, fantastic. Next thing we had to do was soldering and we had to build a closed circuit on a little, uh, I guess, circuit, circuit board, if that would make sense. Well, some people were less familiar with this, but the guy who ended up just doing mine for me. He's like, yeah, you didn't do soldering in high school? And I'm like, no, high school did not have soldering. Like, I don't even know what that is. Needless to say, I did not become an engineer. I <laughs> switched majors after the first semester. And part of me thinks or knows that because I had such little experience with those very simple engineering materials, I thought, I, I can't even do the stuff that's like play stuff. What am I gonna do when we get to the real deal? So I don't want to limit my children by, at this age because you never know the things that they play with now, the things that they're interested in now, they really could be the springboard for what they're going to do later, their profession, their career, their hobby, I, I don't know. So we're, we're, we dove in, we dove into chemistry. So I'm gonna tell you what we're doing, how we're doing it, and what I think about it so far. So the first thing is I did my research. Once I looked online for different curriculums, I didn't see one that was gonna fit our needs. I decided to just get online, do some old fashioned research and 
brush up on the chemistry that I needed to know. You know, first of all, I did a little bit too much research. I got overwhelmed. I was like, there's no way I can teach this. I don't understand this, but this is what happened. I was trying to understand chemistry like on a high school level, right? But I only have to teach him on a first grade level. Now, as he advances, then I would obviously be teaching chemistry. I'd have a textbook and I'd have a teacher's manual, just like any person who was in high school and middle school teaching it. But for first grade, I don't have a teacher's manual for chemistry, so I had to come up with it on my own. So I did a couple different things. The one, keeping everything hands on just with the premise of Montessori is that, that the hands, the working of the hands is going to lead to the unlocking of the mind. And so we started off with this, as you can see, this placemat. I got this at Michael's and so it's the periodic table. So this is just for some breakfast time learning. They typically only use their placemats at breakfast. Um, I got him and my daughter one, she's in preschool, but if you like, we can get the pictures, the numbers, the letters, they didn't really know what all was going on. But today we dove more into chemistry. And so because they had been using these for about three weeks, the things that I was talking about, it was all clicking. They're like, oh, that's on my placement. Oh, we saw that on your placement. I'm like, yes, the things are on your placement. So we're using that placement and that's just a, what I wanna say, passive way, passive way of learning. Next, we got these awesome books, um, which talks about atoms and electrons. And it's, even though it's cartoony, it is solid information and it's a way that children can understand, they can grasp. And so today, as we were talking about protons and neutrons and electrons, I had them just use three different colors of Play-Doh. We had the protons and the neutrons in the middle, making a nucleus. We had the electrons going around, and I told them about the atomic number, how the number above the um, element tells them how many protons to use, so they were having a good time with that. And I say all this to say, that was redundant, but <laughs> I'm saying all this because I just want them to have a solid foundation. This might be something they're interested in for a week. Maybe it'll be six months. I don't know, but I do want them to have solid information. And I wanted to move beyond making slime. Like we've made slime, we've made Play-Doh and those things are fun and they're great and there's nothing wrong with that. But I wanted them to understand what was happening as best they can. Um, we're not doing any tests about chemistry or any drills, like let's see what they learn. But just in me hearing them talk, I can listen and tell if they understand what's happening or not. This book, How Do Molecules Stay Together? A book about chemistry is also pretty fantastic. It goes through elements. We really like this ice cream shop idea of elements and molecules and how different elements come together to form molecules and bonds. And so we've used this. It's pretty text heavy. So we just read a couple pages per day, but the kids really grasp onto it. Another way that we've been learning is through these geometric shapes. Now this doesn't really have anything to do with chemistry. It's more about building 3D shapes. However, I want them to see um, by using, and just by playing with these balls and with the rods and with the curved pieces, it was almost like we were creating different elements. And I just wanted them to see, we're gonna talk about it later, how when these pieces come together, it's like they're forming a bond. All right, so once again, hands on, so much fun. And they learn by doing. Another free resource that we found were these element cards, and I'll link these below. So I printed these. You can see those without the glare. Another thing we used were these element cards. So I printed them off, put them on the eight by five card, and then I just colored the corner to match the kids' placemats. And so we're just gonna talk about the atomic number being the same number of protons, and then talk about, do we know what any of these things are? Do we see these things around our house or in our neighborhood? or in our community, just so they can understand that the elements form life around us. This book has been great. What is the world made of? This really helped us when we talked about the states of matter. So I know it's fun to do those experiments with gas and liquid and solid. 
and this gave us a great example of it. So we read this book first when we started talking about chemistry and molecules, and then we did a couple experiments. One of them in here was we spray some perfume in a room, and then the perfume disperses. So you spray in one corner of the room, and then the kids wait for the smell to reach them. And we talk about how did the smell get to you? How did it travel to you? Oh, can you could you see the perfume? No, but you could smell it. You could smell it because it dispersed throughout the air as a gas. So that was a fun one. So the last thing I bought was, I feel like it's upside down. This is called Old Knobby Molecular Kit. We have not used this yet, but let me show you what it looks like. So it comes in this hard case. I took it out and checked it out last week when it arrived. So you have these different shapes. They look like beads almost. And they connect with these pegs to form different elements. So that's why we started off with these. So the kids got the concept of linking these balls and chains together, or not chains, rods, <laughs> not ball and chain. <laughs> linking the balls and rods together so they understand that the elements, these atoms, even though they're so tiny, we can't see them, they're still held together by these invisible forces. So that's where we are right now when it comes to chemistry. Um, I have some more information on the blog if you want to check it out. Another thing that I think is important is just making any subject that we study real to the kids. So yeah, we can talk about protons and neutrons and electrons. But what does that mean? Like, what does that have to do with their life? What are the periodic table, when are they going to use that? So what we've done is out in the garden, we got the soil prepared and I print off the cycle of nitrogen and the cycle of carbon. I don't have examples of those cards, but I'll still link them below from Washika Biomes. Great resource. Printed those off so kids can um, see how the nitrogen is in the soil and it's absorbed by the plant and how the things that are in the soil, when you help these soil, because it's going to go into the plant, which is either going to go into an animal or we're going to eat it and then that goes into our body. And just that cycle of how the things that are in the earth are going to eventually get to us and we don't want to have polluted water. And what does that mean? Oh, chemicals in the water. So, you know, so making it real. Another way we're making it real is that we are using different elements for spelling words. So that's another way just to practice them, get them into his mind. And then lastly, we're also studying geology. And when we do our experiments and we're gonna be doing baking soda, you know, vinegar to cause an eruption, just talking about that's a chemical reaction, looking for sodium bicarbonate, looking for sodium and carbon on the, um, on the periodic table. And also we've been studying our Latin root words, our suffixes and our prefixes. So when he says, sees by, bicarbonate, you know, we talk about this, a bicycle, there's two of them. So, you know, all these things interleak and that's why I do enjoy following the child because it just allows me to basically bring everything that we're studying together in one spot versus having everything in a different compartment. Like, okay, this year we're gonna study botany and that's it. Or next year we're gonna study geology, that's it. Well, you know, part of the reason that we homeschool is so that we could be flexible and we could study the things that we want to study and not say, you know, well, the state says that in second grade, this is what you learn. Well, not necessarily, like developmentally, that might not be appropriate. Academically, your child might not be interested. And at the end of the day, you can't make someone learn something that they're not interested in. You can force memorization, right? But that's not learning. Like memorizing something isn't learning something. Learning is understanding the inner workings. And so I'm really about learning in this house, not about how much can we memorize because I can make you memorize anything. It doesn't mean you understand it. It doesn't make it have um, significance to your life. So we're all about excitement and enjoyment in education. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please sub subscribe. <laughs> Please subscribe below. <laughs> Tell your friends all about it and that I mess up and mix up my words all throughout the videos. So thank you so much. You guys have a great day.